All right, I think we're ready to start. Okay, uh, this is Larry Johnson. Welcome today uh, to uh, Parasoft and DLT's Web UI and API Test Automation Workshop. Uh, again, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm from Parasoft. I head up uh, Parasoft's Government and Military Solutions Division. Uh, with me today, I have Thomas Moore. He's one of our key solutions architects in the uh, test automation uh, <clears throat> and the functional side of, uh, of Parasoft. And as well, we have uh, Rick Stewart, who's a ch chief software technologist at DLT, one of our partner companies. Um, uh, welcome aboard. Again, if you haven't got your uh, uh, environments up, don't worry about it. Just follow along and we'll go from there. Okay. Let me see my, my controls are working. Did you click the um, screen? Yes. All right, try again, Larry. Okay, there we go. Thank you. All right, uh, before we get started, just a little uh, housekeeping stuff. If you guys are not familiar with GoToWebinar, just a, a few tips. Uh, all the attendees' microphones are off. Um, but there is a question box to ask questions to the presenters. Okay, so, but there will be time at the end for Q&A. So uh, unless it's something urgent uh, with your uh, um, in, in environment or something, um, you know, uh, you, you can probably wait to the end, but, but go ahead and just, you know, ask questions. We have uh, folks there to monitor it. Uh, for questions other than the webinar topic, uh, you can submit those to the questions as well. I'm not sure what those might be, you know, questions about Parasoft or, why the sky is blue, I can answer that one, but I'll take that offline. And uh, uh, today's uh, 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 webinar will be recorded, so we'll be providing you that link uh, afterwards as well if you'd like to uh, replay it or show it to some additional folks in your organization, all right? Why? Okay, uh, you guys have already seen this slide, but anyone who's joined late, uh, try to get to your workshop environment. Uh, you should have got an email uh, from CloudShare, which would get this whole process started. Log in, fire up your VM, it'll take a few minutes. You log in with the key icon, and boom, you should get to the Parasol VM desktop, and, uh, and away you'll go. You'll be ready for that uh, once uh, we go through a few slides to set context, and uh, then we'll be in there um, getting our fingers dirty. All right. Hey, Thomas, you know it is because the uh, page down button does not seem to be working on here. Okay. So, workshop agenda. Uh, just uh, we'll do a quick uh, kickoff be uh, with DLT and Parasoft. DLT will come in and talk about where Parasoft solutions can fit into the, the big, big, uh, big picture. You know, secure software factory, uh, DevOps, continuous uh, testing. Uh, then Parasoft will go into addressing today's software testing challenges, go into the workshop goals, talk about the framework of the workshop, you know, really, you know, what it is and isn't. Okay, so what, what your expectations should be. And then we'll just hop on into the workshop and, uh, and, and we'll go. And after that, then we'll, you know, just talk about some of the additional capabilities that are in uh, both uh, our Parasoft Selenic and Smart API testing solutions that you'll be playing with today. And then we'll um, um, kind of get into questions and answers, all right? All right, so at this point, I'll hand it over to uh, Rick Stewart from DLT, kind of give you the, uh, the big picture in terms of uh, DevOps and secure software factory. Terrific. So uh, briefly, we'll get, this is uh, kind of a blueprint of the factory floor, so to speak, of our reference architecture. As you can see, we've taken a holistic approach from all the way to your SEM, all the way out to your production environment, your one or more production environments. When you're dealing with uh, the DOD, you have multiple ships, Humvees, all these uh, disparate set of production environments. And when we're talking about uh, modern architectures, we're bringing in not only on-prem environments, but potentially one or more cloud providers as well. It's where we see the puck moving. And what you see on the screen is where Parasoft plays in that set of activities 
that allow a development team and an operations team and a security team to develop software um, in a very um, uh, organized fashion using an SEM, collecting all the artifacts, you, uh, using scanning software to detect all the dependencies coming in, tracking how you're building that software, what components are made up of that, of that software, is the source code that you're providing um, um, defect free um, and according to your specifications? And how do you promote that workload across the series of enclaves moving across the Kubernetes environment and then being able to deploy in a very um, automated fashion? We believe at DLT that testing is the linchpin of any software development lifecycle uh, maturity level. And now with the movement of to DevOps and DevSecOps, it is critical that you would have no manual processes in that particular um, series of activities. The more you have manual processes in those, in those um, uh, uh, actions, the more that you will, you will uh, build up this um, uh, bottleneck of all these features and uh, functionality being caught up in these manual or these uh, automated CI CD pipelines. And if you have manual testing, you're just gonna stop that assembly line. So we believe Parasoft brings a, a complete set of uh, great technology in order to, for um, an organization to automate all those processes and to get software and services out to their users quicker. So today we're gonna focus just on a couple of those areas where Parasoft shines. Uh, we're gonna be looking at um, the um, automated test suite um, from functional testing, but also looking at how that testing is used in the various different um, perspectives, whether it's uh, QA testing or whether it's performance testing. So what we'll see in this workshop today is give you kind of a hands-on approach to seeing how this software can accelerate your ability to mature into a DevOps um, culture. Thanks, Larry. Thanks much, Rick, appreciate that. Um, a great overview. Uh, so very quickly uh, regarding Parasoft, who we are. Um, well, we've been around since the late 80s, I think 1987. Um, I've, I've been involved with Parasoft for about 20 years, so uh, I'm kind of gray in the muzzle now. But uh, the reason I'm here is because the technologies are great, the people are great. And I think uh, uh, the, the fact that a renewal rate on our solutions are at least 95% shows that people actually use our actually you use our solutions on a day-to-day -day basis and they're successful and it provides value okay tons of patents um we have a, a force worldwide but you know in, in at the end of the day who is parasoft and we're not a broad uh, uh company or a large company but what we do is next slide all we do is automated software testing that's it, it, it it's a very niche kind of focus but we're very very good at this and what's interesting is that with the advent of DevSecOps, DevOps, Agile, software testing has become even more important for organizations. Okay, it's a it, it is testing is the aspect of software development that touches every part of the software development lifecycle, from the time you cut code all the way to the time you deliver code. There's testing that goes along that entire stretch, and uh, Parasoft does a great job at automating all of that. Okay, next. Ah, so the challenge, so th these next two slides are the essence really of what this workshop is all about. And I think you folks are probably very familiar with this. I don't want to, you know, you know, be the dead horse with the testing pyramid, but Martin Fowler did a lot of great work. It started in the early 2000s and basically uh, uh, was kind of uh, formalized, I think around 2012, but it was all basically a foundation in terms of how you approach software testing okay it's um uh, it's basically about you know uh, ne ne next uh uh it's all about kind of building up from the bottom right so you're building code you want to make sure it's reliable and secure build out unit tests okay these kind of things are very low level testing need a lot of technical expertise but these things are very automatable okay and as you build up this software in common in in, in, in current modern architectures you're building out services. So you, what you'd like to do is basically test these services in isolation. 
or in conjunction to provide some level of functionality and automate those as well, i.e. API test. And again, it starts going up this pyramid in terms of automating you, your UI test. The whole focus is to put a less of a burden on the, the tester themselves, okay, in terms of doing manual things and focus on building up the structure um, and, and automate it. Well, that's the best laid plans, right? If you're in a green, greenfield development effort, brand new program, you're starting from scratch, realities are 90% of the organizations we uh, work with already have programs in flight. Okay, they already have systems, very complex systems, actually integrated with some systems that were built in the 60s and 70s. So the realities are there's a lot of manual testing being done out there. And what we found is that even though 64% of folks have kind of adopted or going towards things like Selenium in terms of automating their web UI tests, it's, it's still in its infancy, it's limited. And when you get down to the API testing layer or the unit testing layer, it, 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 it's, it's even less at times. So instead of being this pyramid, a lot of organizations really have this thing that kind of looks like a chalice, right? So while, while the, the testing at the higher levels is quick to divine, define, but these tests, they break very easily. They're time consuming and they cost a lot of money, okay, to, to actually run and a lot of wait time. The lower the levels are, they're very quick to execute, simple to test, but it takes technical expertise, okay? So today's kind of workshop is, you know, how do we get from here, here to there? Okay, how do we, if we're here today, how do we start pushing down and start filling in these gaps? How, you know, how can we take legacy systems and start automating some UI tests, automating some API tests, and go from zero to 100 if you're going from manual? Get automation done. Get stuff that you can actually put into a CI CD pipeline. So that's what we're going to do today. And because of all of this, what we're seeing here, there's a, a struggle to, to uh, ex, you know, accelerate or have a, 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 um, a, a good control of uh, a testing strategy. But if you cannot automate these various levels of these tests, unit tests, API, API tests, and automated UI tests, then you really it's really tough to achieve CI CD because testing, it, or there's gateways all the way along that you need to be able to test in. But if you if you don't have the artifacts to actually automate, then what you're doing is you're you're you're, you're basically basically going to slow down your pipeline and or introduce issues into uh, uh, your 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 releases that are gonna come back to haunt you. Okay, so next slide. So accelerating uh, this uh, software test automation strategy, click, next. Um, Parasoft focuses in, in all these areas uh, down at the language level, you know, the base, Java, C++, uh, uh, the .NET, the .NET family to, to do uh, security scans, unit tests, drive code coverage. As you build up these services, you can apply SOA tests, which is API testing for individual services or the flow across multiple. And you can take these same type of tests and leverage these for load and performance. But and, and as you know, as you as you build out an environment and you're trying to integrate, there's a lot of moving parts there. And, and you've got external systems, systems out of your control, systems that are being developed in parallel. Well, how do you integrate earlier if you've got all these moving parts, if you can't test until you have everything? Well, that's where certain things like service virtualization come in in order to allow you to simulate these additional aspects of your environment so that you can control your own destiny when it comes to testing. And then when it comes to the, the UI level, you know, like I said, folks are, yeah, everything's kind of going web UI based. So how do we automate this with the adoption of Selenium? Uh, our solution Selenic can sit on there and read on top of that and reduce the complexity and maintainability of it. But it also helps uh, bootstrap you into actually, if, if you haven't gotten into Selenium, creating tests if, uh, that you can automate and again, get to that CI CD process. So by, by applying uh, next, so at the workshop today is really focused in this area. Selenic, Smart API is part of Selenic. I mean, uh, part of SOA test. So the combination of Selenic and SOA test is going to drive your automated UI tests and API tests. So, so now you get a bottom or a top-down approach on systems that are you know already in flight. Okay, so it'll take the burden off of the the, the user or the manual tester. Okay, and allow them to do more uh, in terms of testing and more product in, in a more productive manner. Next.
And of course, the end game is to get a woohoo from your uh, from your testers, right? <laughs> or you want to you want them to be happy. Next. Okay, so the workshop goal. There is only one goal of this workshop. It's to, to, to show you how you can accelerate your functional test automation and go from zero to 100, meaning go, you don't have anything and all you have are manual tests. We're going to show you how you can leverage your existing manual UI testing, browser-based testing, and easily create deep functional test automation. So it's a, when I say deep, it's about creating Selenium tests and creating the underlying API scenario tests that are in support of that web UI. You know, that's actually interacting with, with uh, backend applications and services. And then we'll show you how you then can take those automated tests and incorporate those into a CI CD process. We won't be plugging it into Jenkins today, but you'll see very easily that as part of this automation, you will have command lines that are automatically provided for you that you just plug into Jenkins and off you go. You know, there, 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 there's some cleanup and stuff that may be done but it's 99% you know, of the automation is done for you. So that's the goal, how to get from zero to 100, from manual to automation. Next. Ah, the workshop framework, what it is and isn't. Let's start with the isn't. Okay, first, this is not a training class. Next. So you're not going to be fluent in Parasoft Selenic or Smart API, okay? And hopefully it's not boring. At least we hope not. It's only an hour long. Um, you know, you, um, so... So it should be pretty straightforward, right? What it is, you will understand the key process of how to kickstart and accelerate your automated testing needs. Okay, so you're going to get visibility in how, how, how you can actually accomplish this. And it doesn't take a whole bunch to do that. You're actually going to get your fingers dirty. And this is different. We, we do a lot of webinars. I've sat on a lot of webinars and you listen, listen, listen. But here today, you're going to actually touch a solution. Next, and get a hands-on use of Parasoft for automating Selenium tests and API test creation, execution, and reporting. Okay, I think this it's key. And the last thing, it's an adventure. We've never done this before, okay? So this is the first time we've tried this. We've got about 50 folks that, that, that have signed up for this, a lot of the attendees. We're introducing cloud share into the mix. So, so, so hopefully this goes off with, with, without a hitch from an from a interaction perspective. Again, if, you, if you're having issues, Put it aside, pay attention to Thomas that is going to take you through this, okay? But he's going to be pausing between each step so you can, you know, uh, well, come along and um, we'll go from there. So uh, it is, it'll be an adventure. Okay, Thomas, next slide. Okay, so Thomas will take you through a kind of a quick briefing on what Sol uh, Solenic is and what uh, SOATest Smart API is. Thanks. All right, thank you, Larry. So to start off, what we're going to be doing is just talking a little bit about Selenic and uh, how it works. So how we're going to start off is we're going to be this user here, um, and we're going to be interacting with a web-based application. Um, and one of the things that we'll see here is we are going to be leveraging a traffic recorder. Now, this is a Chrome plugin uh, for the Chrome, sorry, the Chrome browser. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to uh, record the different actions that we're taking with our web application today in order to create test scripts uh, within our Selenium environment. Now, not only will this create test scripts, but this will also create those scripts leveraging the page object model so that we can create scripts that are uh, expandable. So we can continuously record and build upon existing scripts and page objects without having to rewrite the wheel every time we do this. Now. During the process of this, what we'll be able to do is take those uh, test scripts, and as we run those, we'll be able to uh, execute those. Uh, we'll, through the use of Selenic, you'll be able to uh, retry tests or self-heal at runtime. Uh, and through the course of that, Selenic will go ahead and generate recommendations based on uh, missing locators or uh, bad weight conditions and different things like that in order to help users uh, find what's wrong with their current test and help quick fix it. Additionally, through the course of execution, what we'll be able to do is uh, take that information uh, generated after the test is run and pump that into reporting and analytics. Now, for the focus of the uh, webinar and workshop today, the section that we're going to be focusing on is specifically within this section over here, 
with the creation of our uh, test scripts with the page object model. All right. So at the same time that we're doing that, we'll also be uh, taking a look at uh, leveraging the SOA test smart API test generator. So simultaneously, while we are going to be recording our manual testing scenario, going through each of the different uh, interactions with our web application, we'll also be recording the traffic as it's going back and forth between my browser and my application. And what this will do is this will go ahead and grab all the traffic as it's going through during my manual test scenario. And then we'll go ahead and leverage SOA tests AI to build API test scenarios on the fly. And we'll be able to go ahead and take those, import those into SOA test and run them as part of our test repository. Additionally, SOA test allows us to go ahead and uh, train templates to expand that uh, AI to build our API test scenarios. But again, for the focus of the workshop today, we're gonna be focusing in on the creation aspect of this today. So what we'll be able to do is leveraging both Selenic and SOA test together, we'll be able to help you get from zero to 100 quickly. All right. All right. So I, 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 think, I think we're there with a little background in terms of the technologies you'll be using. So uh, go ahead, Thomas, let's take them into the workshop. All right. So as we were saying, um, we're going to be working with a web application today. That web application is going to be the Parabank application. I'll step everybody through uh, how to get started with that. So let me go ahead and bring up my CloudShare environment here. All right, give me just a moment to get that spun up. All right. So the first time you come into your environment, what you'll see is this overview screen here. What you'll want to do is switch over to the Parasoft functional section. And then from here, when you're connecting to the VM for the first time, you'll see this screen here. What you'll want to do is just click on the uh, Parasoft section in the middle, and then to log in, click on the little key icon on the left side under virtual keyboard. And that will go ahead and log you into the VM, so you'll be able to uh, interact with the VM here. I'll go ahead and expand this. All right, so now that I have my VM up and running here, the first step is to go ahead and uh, get all the different uh, backend pieces running uh, for the workshop today. So what we'll want to do is run this shell script up here, this start necessary components. So this will start up the Parabank application and different backend applications that we need up and running. So go ahead and double click on that. And uh, you won't get any user feedback that something's happening, but rest assured that it is happening uh, in the background here. If you want to verify that, what we'll be able to do is open up the Chrome browser since we'll be needing that for the course of our uh, workshop today. And when the Chrome browser is open, go ahead and click on the first uh, bookmark here for Parabank. And when it's up and running, you'll be able to see the Parabank application up and running here. Now, while that's starting up, additionally, what we'll want to do is start up SOA test and Selenic. Um, now you may notice the software updater pop up the first time you log into your VM. Go ahead and just close that. We don't need to worry about that for today. So as I was saying, we'll want to start up uh, SOA test and Selenic. We'll see these two shell scripts here up at the top, so start SOA vert and start Selenic. Go ahead and start both of those as well. And we'll get pop-ups for our workspaces. Go ahead and click Launch and OK for both of those. And that'll start up the workspaces for both of those. All 
All right. So as this is starting, um, just to familiarize ourselves with the workflow that we're going to be taking through the Parabank application, uh, what we're going to be doing today is testing the bill pay scenario. So basically, we'll be going into our application, logging in, uh, paying some bills that our uh, user has to uh, take care of, and then we'll be able to take that information and pass that into Selenic and SOA test. So we can see my SOA test desktop has started up here. Uh, and when you uh, log in, what you'll see is this little uh, red text that says license is not active. Just go ahead and click on the blue link below that and you'll be able to activate your license. Once you have that, uh, you'll see on the right side of our screens here that there's going to be a little green run button. Go ahead and click on that and that will start up the SOA test server. We need all these pieces up and running so that we can go ahead and actually uh, begin the recording process for our API tests. We'll see that uh, the Selenic workspace is already opened up, so that's good. We don't need to do anything special here. So before I go ahead and get started with the actual recording, the meat and potatoes of the, uh, the workshop today, um, if there's any questions, feel free to share those in the uh, questions chat. And we'll be able to uh, answer those live here. I'll give just a minute for that. All right. So. Hey, hey, Thomas, um, when, when you bring up the um, power bank, can, can you go uh, review again what the uh, what the use case is going to be? Yeah, so the use case for power bank today is going to be, uh, we're going to be logging in to our uh, web application here. Actually, I'll go ahead and show it. Um, so we'll be logging in to our application. We'll be taking a look at our uh, UI here, just verifying some of the amounts in our accounts. Uh, and then we'll be going into the bill pay function, filling out some of these fields, uh, and then sending our payment. From there, we'll be able to uh, go through the uh, process of creating our Selenium script and uh, creating the API tests from this. Very good, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so if folks are having problems getting uh, Parabank up and running, um, one of the things that you can do instead of double clicking on the shell script is you can actually open up uh, a terminal and run the shell script from the terminal uh, if you're familiar with how to do that. Um, that way you will get some user feedback if that's uh, starting up. Yeah, also, I, I think you can, can you also right mouse click and just say open? Yes, you can do that as well. Yeah, I think that because sometimes I know my mouse sometimes gets stuck. So uh, right mouse click mm -hmm. and, and open works. All right. So we'll wait a minute and uh, and then we can move on. Again, if you have any issues with uh, getting Parabank up or, or the other solutions up, um, we'll probably be forging ahead and we can work with you, uh, you know, afterwards to make it successful for you. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. So uh, once we have everything up and running here, uh, just to verify, we have our, oh, where's my mouse? There it is. Uh, so we have our uh, SOA test workspace up and running. We have the SOA test server running here. Uh, again, that's just clicking the little green run button on the right side of the SOA test workspace. Uh, we have Selenic up and running, and we have our Parabank application ready to go. So now that we have all this in place, let's go ahead and get started with the uh, the fun part. So. What we'll want to do is up on the top right of our Chrome browsers, uh, you'll see a little Parasoft logo up there. If you hover over it, it will say Parasoft Recorder. 
If you go ahead and click on that icon, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and test the connection uh, for the API traffic recording section here. Once it's verified that connection, we'll see that the, uh, the screen becomes available for me to actually interact with. And from here, I can go ahead and, and start recording. All right, so once I am recording with my uh, Chrome plugin here, now is when I need to go ahead and interact with my web application. So in this case, I'll go ahead and log in with the username John, J-O-H-N, all lowercase. And the password for my application is going to be demo, D-E-M-O, all lowercase as well. Once we have that, I can go ahead and log in. And the next thing I want to do is I want to take note of an account that I'm going to be interacting with for my uh, bill pay operation here. In this case, the account that I'm going to be pulling those funds from is going to be this account right here, 13122. We'll see that it has $1,100 in its balance currently. We're going to verify that after our uh, workflow is done here, that that value is uh, updated appropriately. So once we have that, our next step is to go into the bill pay section here. And here we just need to fill out several fields. In this case, I'll go ahead and make this payable to myself. And I'll go ahead and provide some information uh, here. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and provide an account number that the funds are going to be transferred into. In this case, uh, the account is going to be uh, 98765. And for the amount of funds that I'm going to be transferring, let's go ahead and transfer $200. In this from account section here, I want to go ahead and make sure that I select that 13122 uh, account, the one that we took note of earlier. And once I have that, I'll go ahead and send payment. Having done that, I'll see that the bill payment to myself in the amount of $200 was successful. If I go back to my account activity here, I'll see that the amount of funds in my account has gone down from $1,100 to $900, so that's expected. The last step for me here is to go ahead and log out and then stop my recording. All right. So now that I'm uh, done recording my web scenario, we'll get this pop up here. And uh, once we have this pop up, the next step is to go ahead and uh, name the test that we have just done. In this case, we went through the bill pay operation. So I'll go ahead and call this test bill pay. Uh, it'll also take note of the number of actions that were recorded as I was going through my web scenario. And if I have any uh, requirements traceability systems in place, I can go ahead and associate this test with a work item as well. Now I can go ahead and download my recording. My apologies, Larry. How, Larry, how long have I been muted? You haven't been muted. I can hear you. Okay, no, we, good. We can do. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah. So once we have uh, saved that information for the uh, the Selenic test, the next step is to go ahead and ensure that the name for our uh, SOA test API traffic is correct here, and we'll go ahead and create our test asset as well. Once we do that, we'll get a little pop-up at the top of my screen here that says my test asset was successfully created. So once we get to that point,
portion of the uh, workshop, we'll be able to take a look at the API test that was created as part of this. So the first piece here that we want to take a look at is actually taking a look at the Selenium uh, tests that will be created as uh, part of our workflow here. So going into the uh, sorry, going into the uh, Selenic workspace, uh, what we'll want to do is create a new project from the recording that we just made. So if I go up to the top left of my workspace here, I'll be able to drop down on the uh, right next to the new icon here. And we'll be able to select Selenium Java project from recording. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and name my project Parabank, that being the application that I'm testing against right now. For my UI recording, if I go ahead and click on the little ellipses button over here on the right side, and then navigate to the downloads folder, we'll find the recording that was made as part of my workflow here. So this being the billpay.json file. So I'll go ahead and click open for this. And then for package, uh, just keeping with good practices, um, I'm going to go ahead and name this com.parabank. And then for the class is going to be bill pay. Okay. Hey, Thomas, no, can this you, is just, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, why don't you hold, hold up a second, let people maybe catch up here. That's a lot of information, a lot of stuff to type in. Uh, give them yep. one more. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so this is just for uh, for basically for programming best practices um, using this nomenclature here. Um, so if you want, you can leave these very simple. <clears throat> All right, so uh, once we have this, last step to create our test is to go ahead and just click the Finish button. And once we do that, we'll see the Parabank uh, project created here. And the billpay.javas would will uh, pop up here. So this is going to be the uh, Java class that was created. The uh, Selenium recording that we're going to be using here. And if we want to take a look at the page object model that was created as part of our workflow, uh, if you go ahead and expand the Parabank project and the source folder, you'll see that there is a uh, package here called com.parabank.page. If you go ahead and expand that, you'll see all the different um, classes that are used for the page object model as well. So let's go ahead and run our test now. And to run our test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and keep the Parabank project selected here, and then click the Selenic Run button up at the top. It's going to be the one, uh, the rightmost green play button in my workspace. Okay, so it's going to go ahead and log in, go into Bill Pay. Now it's going to feed in all that information that we recorded. And now my test has run through completely. We'll see that I have uh, one out of one test runs complete, and no errors uh, associated with this test. Now, one of the other things that Selenic allows us to do is actually have uh, more advanced reporting as part of our test flow here. So if I want, I can actually edit my test configuration to open up an HTML report after my test is executed. So I'll go ahead and apply that setting here. Additionally, uh, since we were talking about adding in my test to a command line execution, what I can do is I can actually click on the show command line section here. And this will give me exactly what I need to feed into uh, something like uh, Jenkins, Bamboo, Team City, whatever CI 
uh, architecture I have in place to go ahead and execute this test from the command line. So once we uh, have that HTML report uh, selected, we can go ahead and check uh, or click Run with Selenic once more. And now after my test has run through for this last time, I will also get a uh, report that I can not only take, look at, and then uh, use for future test runs, especially if I have any errors associated with my test, but we also have advanced, um, uh, sorry, advanced reporting capabilities, especially digging into some of the errors that are taking place. We also have things like execution time and average test time. We can see that my average test time is actually longer than the current execution because we keep track of that over time uh, to show if my application is slowing down over different sprints. All right, so now that we've taken a look at uh, basically the creation of tests in Selenic, uh, I want to turn our attention over to uh, API testing real quick here. So if I go into the uh, SOA test workspace, which is going to be the Parasoft logo over here on the left side of the screen, uh, we want to take a look at the test case that was created as part of our API test recording. So for that, I can go ahead and expand the test assets project here. And then we'll see the billpay.tst uh, API test that was created as part of our web recording. If you double click on that, that'll open the little cardboard box here. And then we can go ahead and expand that once more. And here we will see the number of API calls that were made as part of my test creation. So in this case, I logged into my application, went into my account screen, paid my bill, and then went back into my account screen once more. Now, the thing that I want to call attention to here is that this is going to be the difference between functional validation testing and user acceptance testing. If I'm going through by UI, I want to do user acceptance testing. And here, I want to validate functionality. So in here, when I run my test, I can go ahead and validate that the funds are actually decremented from that account by taking a look at the traffic viewer uh, associated with the last step in my test here. So in here, if I go ahead and just uh, select also, this is a little bit more readable, and go down to account 13122, we can see that there are $300 remaining in that account. And as part of my test validation, if I go ahead and run this one more time, I should see that the amount of funds in that account is now 100. Now we don't have to go in and manually validate this every time. We do have workflows available for you to enable uh, automatic assertions, but due to uh, time constraints for this uh, workshop and uh, being a little bit out of scope for what we're doing today, um, just know that that's available. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back to Larry. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Thomas. Can, can you get to the next slide? Yeah, so so what Thomas is yeah, saying absolutely. is that, you know, fine, we've done a lot of automation here, right? We, we've uh, interacted with the, the banking application, uh, automatically created uh, Selenium uh, tests that you could, you know, run from the desktop, but you can also incorporate as part of CICD. The same thing with SOA test, right? And Smart API, you've created this scenario, uh, the flow of all of the uh, service calls that are, are done in support of that application. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a lot more you can do here. There's a lot of things you can plug in in terms of uh, analyzing the traffic, putting assertions in, you know, locking it down from a pure you know, regression testing perspective, because that's what you're going to need to do when you incorporate into the CICD. Today was about, you know, how do I create the test quickly? There's a lot more to it. Again, it's not a training session. It's not you know everything you need to know about our solutions. So that kind of brings up you know the additional capabilities to explore. And we can do this offline. We can you know uh, do a deep demo for you, deep uh, valuation with you guys. But again, there's the command line for incorporation into um, the CI CD framework, Jenkins, Bamboo, whatever. Okay, as part of um, you know the Selenium test running, 
Uh, we didn't really get into it, but it has the uh, capability to do runtime self-healing. So as these tests are running as part of your pipeline, if it sees something wrong, it's going to use AI to try to uh, come up with a solution to get those uh, to uh, get those tests to run so that build doesn't fail and send those uh, recommendations back to development or a QA for them to say, yeah, that looks pretty good. And with a click of a button, change all of those tests to conform to, to the way they should be running today. OK, so, so it really reduces the maintenance in, in that world. Uh, the ability to scrupulously add assertions because you're going to need assertions. So again, it's about streamlining the testing and doing as much automation as possible. And of course, all of this stuff can be parameterized. Okay, well, we're kind of using hard coded data here, but you can drive with Excel, Excel spreadsheets, databases, etc. Because you're going to want to do that to do both positive and negative testing against your systems. Very easily incorporated. Right, and then and then actually taking these API tests that you were generated and leveraging them for load and performance without writing any code. You basically drop them into load test, model the number of users you want to bang on, on the system and, and, and the model, you know, how they come in and how often they hit. And then you can see whether or not you're uh, meeting your service level agreements for your various services or your uh, application as a well. whole. There's way more to it. Again, today was basically, hopefully some of you, a lot of you got your fingers uh, dirty here. Again, this has been recorded. We've got the uh, script out there, and the VMs are uh, still operational, I think, for, 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 for a little while. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how long, but uh, maybe Thomas can comment on that. So you can always go back and start from scratch, okay, So uh, at your leisure. But you know, if you want to dive deeper, just send an email to any of these uh, addresses here, government solutions at parasoft.com, to myself, L. Johnson, and Jamie at Parasoft. And uh, we'd be more than happy to dig in deeper with you guys. Um, I guess we're a little bit over today. Um, I don't know if we have time for a couple of questions. Um, what do you think? I get okay. I guess what it, uh, I guess consensus is what we're going to do is gather the questions. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and answer those and provide the answers to, to everyone. So uh, uh, in terms of time, we'll let everybody go. I hope you enjoyed today. I hope, hope you got some uh, benefit out of this. And again, we'll be in touch to uh, uh, take you to the, to the next step in your journey in terms of uh, software test automation. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.